Hi everyone. So this is Unit 2, Lesson 3. Uh, we're going to be looking at word problems that involve many of the concepts we've used so far. So things like slope, midpoint, and distance. So learning goal seems pretty simple. Solve problems using midpoint, slope, and distance formulas, as well as some other facts about uh, lines and triangles that you already know. Okay, so this is where things start to get a little bit more difficult. Um, you might have seen this or had a hint of this already in the first lesson in this unit when you had to do those questions that involve perpendicular bisectors. Um, that question takes a bit of thinking and a bit of analysis, um, but you are going to start to see now that it becomes difficult to just memorize all the different strategies that you can use to solve these specific problems uh, because there are a lot of them. So rather than memorize strategies, this is where you have to start to try to build strategies yourself. And so you've got to think about the things that we've covered in the last couple lessons as being sort of like tools in a toolkit. And your job is going to be to look at a problem, come up with a strategy to solve it on your own, and then start picking out the tools that you have to do the job. So if you look at the problem, you should think, okay, well, I could use this tool there, and I can use that tool there. And you start to develop your own strategy. So this is one of the more difficult things to do in math, right? It's not as simple as just calculating something. You got to think about how to solve a problem. So let's look at the tools that you have so far, because this is what you're going to be using to solve the problems in this lesson. So you have your slope formula, you have your midpoint formula, you have your distance formula, you know some properties of lines, you know hopefully that parallel lines have the same slope as each other. Um, if you have perpendicular lines, their slopes are negative reciprocals. Right? So for example, if one is 3 over 4, the other one will be negative 4 over 3. You know that the equation of a line has fits y equals mx plus b. Something else I should have included in here, you also know c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Um, so that's going to be important as well. So these are tools you're going to have to use um, in developing strategies to solve a problem. So we'll start with an easier problem. Example 1. Um, a provincial park uses an XY plane system to identify locations in the park. So they have like a grid and each location in the park has a set of coordinates. Um, believe it or not, there are places that kind of do this. I, I don't really know in Ontario, but um, I was teaching in the UK for a couple of years and we had students go out on uh, expeditions and they had to uh, hike across the country and live in tents and things, which was pretty fun. Uh, but they actually used this kind of system to uh, figure out how to get from place to place. So these things do exist. Um, each unit on the grid uh, represents one kilometer. So our units are going to be kilometers here. Um, a park ranger finds an injured camper at point A, which has the coordinates 8, 12. The camper can be taken to a first aid station at point B, which will be 14, 17, or an alternative first aid station at point C, which will be 4, 6. So you have a choice between B or C. So assuming you could take them to either location and it's a straight line and it's about equal difficulty to go from one to, to one or the other, which first, station, first aid station should they go to? Okay, so this is what the problem would look like if you plotted it out. So the two of them are at A and they could go to the first aid station B or they could go to the first aid station C. So which one should they go to? Uh, so here's the answer. Um, ideally, they should go to to the one that's closer to them, right? So that's going to be the shortest distance. And you already know how to find distance. We have in our toolkit the distance formula. So all we're going to have to do here is find the distance from A to B, find the distance from A to C, and see which one's shorter. Whichever one's shorter, that's the one we want to go to. So we have our distance formula. And so I'm going to calculate the distance between A and C. So we have uh, X. 2, which I'm going to consider to be 8. Uh, so that would mean if x2 is 8, y2 is 12, which would mean x1 is 4 and y1 is 6. So we plug all of those things into our formula. Um, not too much to say here. Do brackets first, so then we get a number inside each bracket. We square each bracket um, so that 4 squared is 16, 6 squared is 36. Since these are both under the square root, we add these first. You get the square root of 52. So you could leave this as square root of 52 kilometers, but it might be hard to make a comparison with some other numbers sometimes. Plus, if you're dealing with things in the real world, you're probably never going to tell somebody it's 
uh, route 52 kilometers to a place, you'll, you'll probably want an approximation. So this symbol, if you can recall, means approximation. So it's approximately 7.2 kilometers, right? The square root of 52 is not exactly 7.2. Um, we have to round it because it's in an irrational number. Okay, so we calculate the distance between AC. We then calculate the distance between AB, and we find that that distance is slightly longer. So then we can conclude that, therefore, the ranger and the camper should go to the first aid station at point C, as it is closer to their location by approximately 0.6 kilometers, right? This one's 7.2, this one's 7.8. So that's 600 meters less traveling, which might not seem like much, but if you're injured, um, it might be uh, much better to not have to travel that last 600 meters. Okay, so that's the first question. Second question is a bit more tricky. You have the vertices of some triangle, ABC. So the points are going to be A, B, and C, right? The vertices or points are A, B, C. You have A at 5, comma 5, B at negative 3, negative 1, C at 1, negative 3. Okay, so I have a picture of that here for you. Um, if you don't have a picture, I highly recommend that you draw these pictures um, whenever you have this kind of problem. I'll give you part marks for having a drawing that's correct or mostly correct. Um, and to be honest, it's just, it makes your thinking that much easier because it can be difficult to see what to do when you have something written down like this. Once you see it as a picture, coming up with a strategy gets a little bit easier. Okay, so we actually have two ways in our toolkit, um, at least, that we can solve this problem. So I'm going to go over two different ways. We have to figure out if this is a right triangle. And you can probably see by our picture that if this is a right triangle, our right angle will be right in there. Um, that looks like it may or may not be a right angle. So one of the ways you can do this is you can use slopes. right? We know that the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of each other. And what does it mean to say that two lines are perpendicular? Well, it means they intersect at 90 degrees. So if this is a right angle, then this line and this line are perpendicular. Their slopes should be negative reciprocals. So what I'm going to do is use the slope formula to find the slope of all three line segments, line segment AB, line segment BC, line segment AC. And we have points, so we can use our y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 formula. So for AB, for example, for AB, uh, we could say that this uh, is going to be um, x1 and y1, and this will be x2 and y2. We plug those into the formula, and we are able to calculate our slope, which ends up being out of four. Okay, that we don't expect that number to help us very much because the right angle is here, but I'm just going to calculate it anyway. Okay, same thing for BC. BC, we're going to make uh, the y2 value equal to negative three, which will mean that y1 is negative one, x2 is one, and x1 is negative three. So again, it, it, I should probably clarify, it doesn't matter which one of these two you make x1 or x2, but once you've made your choice, then your y values become fixed. In other words, if this is x1, then this must be y1. If this is x2, then this must be y2. So once you've chosen your x, your y follows along with it. All right, so we calculate the slope of bc, and we get negative half. We're going to do the same thing for AC. So again, we have our two points, which we plug into our slope formula. And after we run that calculation, we get the slope simplifies to 2 over 1. Right? The two negatives cancel here. So you get 2 over 1. And you can clearly see that 2 over 1 is definitely the negative reciprocal of negative 1 over 2. It's the number flipped around, and then the sign is opposite. So yes, these two lines are perpendicular. Which means that the slopes are per, uh, which means that these, um, sorry, these two lines are definitely perpendicular because their slopes are negative reciprocals. And so that definitely means we have a right angle here. So we can conclude that yes, this is a right angle triangle. There's another way we can do this problem. Um, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, um, as well as our understanding of um, length, right, the distance formula. So in this, version of the solution. You just calculate the length of each side of the triangle. So you get the length of AB, the length of BC, the length of AC. Um, and that's going to be important in the next unit, being able to figure out the length of all the sides. Um, and if it is a right angle triangle, then we know that this side squared 
plus this side squared should equal this side squared. So we can calculate all the sides and then see if that relationship is true. Is it actually true that this squared plus this squared equals that squared? So that's all we've done here. I've calculated the lengths of all three sides using the distance formula. So again, be careful about your x1, x2. Um, I'm going to go through this relatively quickly here. You can check the calculations yourself. Uh, but the distance or length we can say of AB is going to be 10. The length of BC is going to be square root of 20. Right? Um, I, I'll just leave it square root of 20. This is not a problem where I need to give a distance in kilometers, so I'll leave it in its simplest, uh, its most accurate form, root 20. And DC, D for AC is going to be root 80. Okay, so we've calculated the lengths of all the sides. Uh, we know that AB is the longest side. You can kind of see that just by looking here. So if this is a right triangle, this will be the hypotenuse. So let's just see if we calculate B squared plus A squared, uh, sorry, BC squared plus AC squared, if I get these two shorter sides squared and add them together, do I actually get 10? So we do that calculation and it turns out that yes, when you do this, uh, you get 10 because when you square a number that's a square root, basically that's just the same as getting rid of the square root, right? A, a square and a square root undo each other if you like. Um, 8 squared is 64, square root of 64 takes you back to 8. So if you have both of them, they cancel each other out. Okay, so 20 plus 80 is 100. Um, that's AB squared, so to get AB we take the square root again, um, square root of 100 is 10. So, so yes, we can see that the side is expected to be 10, um, sorry, the side is expected to be 10 if it's a right angle triangle, and when you actually calculate the side it's 10, so there's a match, we have a right triangle. Alright, last question. In our last question, uh, we are going to be using a different term here, we're going to be using this term median. So we want to show that the median from the right angle of a triangle uh, is half as long as a hypotenuse. And we're going to use the same triangle that we had in example two. So it's the same triangle, but I've just drawn this new thing on here, which is a median. So what is a median? A median is a line that connects a vertex, so one of your three points, to the midpoint of the opposite side. So we go from this point to the middle point on the opposite side. So this is a median, um, but all triangles have three medians. Right? You can also go from this point to the midpoint on this side, and from this point to the midpoint on that side. But in this question it says, show the median from the right angle. This is the right angle, so we're talking about this median specifically. So we want to show that this is half the length of the hypotenuse. Well, we already have the length of the hypotenuse from the previous question. We know it's 10 units long. So if we can get the length of this line, we can see, is it actually half of uh, the hypotenuse? To get the length of the line, you can use the distance formula, which we have down here. But to use the distance formula, you need your two endpoints. So you have this point, but you need this point. But this point is the midpoint of, those, of this line here. So we can actually find this point, right? We can use the midpoint formula between from points A and points B. We can find this point. And then once we have these two points, we can use the distance formula to figure out how long this median is. So that's all we're doing here. So I have A, B again. I want to find the midpoint between A and B. So I have my midpoint formula. Again, be careful with your x1, x2, y1, y2. In this case, um, you're adding them. So your x1 in this case will be 5. Your x2 in this case will be negative 3. Your y1 in this case will be uh, 5. And your y2 in this case will be negative 1. So we add those together, simplify, and we get that our midpoint here is at 1, 2. And again, if you graph this, you can see, does your answer look reasonable? Well, yeah, that looks very much like it's 0.1, 2. So now you have this, mid, this midpoint for the hypotenuse is actually the endpoint of the blue line. You have your two endpoints. You plug them into the formula. And it turns out that when you do that, you get a distance of 5. So that tells you that the length of this blue line is 5, and we already said from the previous question, we know that the length of the red line is 10. So, so yes, we have proven that this um, mid, median rather has a length that is half of the hypotenuse, right? It's 5, the hypotenuse is 10. So we've proven that. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing here, um, you've got to really know your formulas and your strategies. You've got to know what's available to you so that you can solve these problems. 
but it's all about coming up with a strategy and using your tools. Thank you.